Hey guys, it's Dr. Nathan Cashin at Natural Family Health Clinic here once again with my weekly book review. And uh, this book is a quick one, a short one, so I'm just going to be sharing three lessons from Don't Just Sit There, transitioning to a standing and dynamic workstation for whole body health. And this is another book by one of my favorite authors currently, Katie Bowman. Uh, you can find her at nutritiousmovement.com and she's got a bunch of books uh, a couple that I've already done movement matters whole body barefoot move your DNA uh, and her first one was alignment matters lots of writing on her blog um, but this one really is about the current fad of stand-up workstations so three lessons from this book number one sitting is not the problem and standing is not the fix. So if you think about it, uh, sitting at work has not really been around for that long, right? Um, within the past hundred years, we started standing, more industrial jobs, lots of injuries occur then. So you can get just as many injuries by standing for eight hours a day as you can sitting. Um, so moving from this, from these low desks, chairs, to a standing workstation is not really going to be the fix because the real problem is simply that we are not moving enough. So the problem is sitting in static postures where our joints do not move through the full range of motion. Um, our hips get tight, our calves get short, and we're just not moving the way that we were meant to. Um, so. That brings me to lesson number two, which is the right way, the right way to stand, the right way to move, the right way to work, is as many ways as possible. So what does that mean? Variation is really key. So sitting in one position all day is not healthy. Standing in one position all day isn't really that healthy either. Um, if you lay in bed for a week at a time, that isn't healthy. So what do we have to do? We have to vary the way that we sit, move, and work. So uh, she's got a couple photos in here, and if you follow her on Twitter, you see her workstation is very fluid. So it will be sitting on the floor in the splits with a laptop in front of her. It is squatting sometimes. It is putting a pile of books on her desk so that she can stand at her computer. Um, it is finding as many different ways to move and position yourself throughout the day to keep the joints moving uh, and keep your body moving. Uh, my favorite quote I think in the book is if you want to make your body stronger and I think you can fill in healthier, fitter, if you want to make your body stronger you have to move period. That takes me to lesson number three and that is that it's not just your body that suffers, right? So we have this idea that oh I've got low back pain or oh my shoulders are hunched forward and I need to move because it's it's all about the body. Well it's not just that. The other thing that happens is we're sitting in front of these devices that are within a couple of feet from our face and our eyes which are meant to gaze off into the distance are stuck looking at the short distance and so we become uh, very myopic. Our, our, the, eye, the muscles of our eyes actually shorten and lose the ability to go from that far distance to the near. And this is something that I've kind of been playing with lately myself, is I will just gaze off into the distance like I am now. I can see the trees off on the horizon. Taking a break uh, for about two to three minutes every 20 to 30 minutes, so about every half hour you get up, you move, you look out the window, you look as far as you can, and allow your eyes to adjust. So it's not just about our bodies, it's also our eyes. But then the other thing that she talks about really um, briefly is blood flow. So when standing was very common, varicosities or varicose veins became a big problem. The reason is blood pools into the lower extremities, those veins get a little bit dilated, there's a lot of pressure there, and those veins lose the ability to pump blood. Well, the reason they do is that, so our arteries, the, the 
veins or vessels that take the blood from the heart and lung to the rest of the body work because of the heart pumping. And so there's pressure. This is when you get your blood pressure that's 120 over 80 or whatever it is. That first number is the pressure of your blood going away from the heart. But the only thing that makes it move is, is the heart. The heart doesn't pump the blood back to it. The way that blood comes back is through the veins, which have a series of valves up and down those tubes. But the blood has to get pumped up to each level. It's kind of like uh, the locks, like the Panama, Panama Canal, where the blood fills, the gate shut, they open the next one, the blood fills, the gate shut, it goes to the next one. So what is the pump? It's our muscles, it's movement especially our calves for those lower extremities, they pump more blood throughout the body than anything else other than the heart. So if we're not moving throughout the day, our blood tends to pool down below, and that can in turn lead to these varicose veins. So one way to prevent them is to continue moving throughout the veins. So it's not just uh, our bodies, the, the physical movement, but it's also the internal organs. It's our eyes and the veins. So standing up doesn't fix the problem. The right way is as many different ways as you can, and it's not just our bodies that suffer. I should mention also, it's also our minds, right? There's a wonderful quote uh, by Henry David Thoreau where he talks about sitting down trying to write and not having thoughts come to him, but the moment that he begins to move, thoughts burst forth and fertilize his brain. It's a wonderful quote really emphasize the importance of movement, not just for our physical well-being, but our mental and our emotional well-being. So in the end, uh, the suggestion is to restructure our work day by throwing in these micro breaks of two to three minutes where we do stretches, we do movements, and she's got uh, a lot of great illustrations and images in here. She talks through how to do them that you should vary. On certain days you do all of them during your breaks. On other days you focus on one and really try to stretch deep. And taking breaks like walking meetings, phone calls while you're walking around the office. So uh, restructuring the work day, but then also restructuring the entire concept of work. Really taking a look at is your job satisfying? Is it fulfilling the needs that you have and maybe there's a way to uh, work from home so that you can sit on the floor and stretch and squat and change your position more frequently. So it's not just about getting a fancy expensive desk. Uh, Stand-up desks or sit-to-stand desks can run anywhere from 300 to thousands and thousands of dollars. These are all things that we can do on a budget without having to buy anything new. It's simply rethinking the way that we work. Highly recommend don't just stand there, it is, or don't just sit there. Uh, it is only about 100 pages, so I read it uh, just in this past week, and I think it's really important for us to understand that movement is key, uh, even in the workplace. So thanks for watching again. I hope you're enjoying these. Please leave me comments down below if there's a book that you think I should review, and uh, if you have any thoughts on sitting and standing at work. Good to talk to you again. Keep moving. I'll see you next week.